welcome back and thank you again for joining us on our virtual family day here at the American Museum of Ceramic Art. Again, my name is Ashley Rowley and I'm the Education Manager here at AMOCA. If you haven't already, we just completed our virtual reading of Hector the Collector written by Emily Beanie. Go ahead and check out the link in the description below so you have the opportunity to read that book. We're going to go ahead and do our hands on now. Um, today we're going to be creating these clay acorn so we can remember the uniqueness and specialty of every collection. Let's get started. Today you're going to need some air dry clay, a fork used for scoring, for slipping and scoring, some texture tools. I generally like to use this uh, straw specifically for the top of this acorn. Hopefully you can see the texture that we're getting here on the top. I've also used the fork for a little bit of texture here um, in this bottom more smooth part of the acorn and then also a bowl of water. If there's something that you don't have uh, that is listed here, uh, if you don't have a fork but you have any kind of toothpick or skewer, those will generally work instead. A pencil also works just fine. Um, if you don't have a straw, any kind of tool that will make sort of an interesting texture once pressed into the clay uh, should be just fine. So you don't specifically need a straw. It can be anything from uh, if you just want to use the same fork again, that should be fine. If you want to use some noodles, some drying noodles at home, those usually work really well. Um, you can find sponges, anything that you can press into the clay that your parents are okay with you using is just fine as a texture tool. You'll also need a surface, and I would suggest wearing some mud clothes or some clothes that you are okay getting dirty. Alrighty, so I've cleared some of our tools out of the way just so we have a nice clean workspace to kind of create in. I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps of this, uh, step by step, so you can go ahead and follow along. Feel free to pause at any time if you need a little more time to work on something, but I'm going to go ahead and keep moving. I'm so excited to see how your acorns turn out. So here's a closer look at the acorn that we created before. Uh, there are two pinch pots in this acorn, so we're going to learn the pinch construction method. This bottom part is a pinch pot, and this top part is a pinch pot. Um, I'm going to show you what that means right now, so don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off by taking our clay, and this is a lot of clay. It doesn't quite fit in my hand, so I'm actually just going to tear off some to make some space so that I can create an acorn that's a little bit closer, a little bit more manageable for me. So I've taken one and I've made something that fits pretty comfortably in my palm here. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull off just a slightly smaller uh, bit of clay. And we're going to save that part for later. So you can see I have one that fits pretty comfortably in the palm of my hand and another bit of clay that's a little bit smaller, fits about half in my hand here. I'm going to take this smaller piece of clay and set that aside for later. And we're going to start with this piece of clay here. What we're going to do first is we're going to dip just our fingers into this bowl of water. We don't want to get our hands too wet or else our clay will melt, but we do want to get our clay workable. We're just going to kind of work it back and forth into our hands, um, cupping our hands like this, and as we're doing so, we're going to twist our clay slightly, and that will kind of get our clay shaped into a ball. Just like that. So once our clay is nicely kind of shaped into a rough shape of a ball, what we can do to kind of smooth that out a little bit, so we can go ahead and place, uh, place that on the table or on a flat surface. And we're going to use the palm of our hand here or our fingers, and we're going to kind of roll this ball in a little bit of a circle. We're going to make sure we apply even pressure as we do this. If you have a little bit of a smooth surface like I do here, it might be a little bit difficult to roll that clay uh, around without it kind of sliding on the surface. So another solution is you can put that in your hands right here and you can go ahead and just roll it in between your two hands just like this to get kind of that smooth ball shape that we're looking for. If you have any additional cracks you can just go ahead and smooth those out with your thumb but they don't have to quite be perfect because again we're not making a perfect ball here we're making an acorn and acorns are all sorts of shapes and sizes just like we learned in Hector the Collector today. So once you have a general ball shape, it'll look something like this. What you're going to do is you're going to take that ball and you're actually going to take your, your good hand. So my, I'm right-handed, I'm going to use my right hand. If you're left-handed, go ahead and use your left hand here. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to press that into your clay. So it should look almost like you've made a little mushroom or a lollipop with the clay on top of your thumb. 
should look something like this. Alrighty, so once you have this shape, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these two fingers, so your middle finger and your ring finger of the same hand, and you're gonna press lightly on the sides of your clay, and then use your other hand to twist that around. Then you're gonna press down again and twist, and you're gonna continue like this until you get kind of that acorn shape that we're looking for. You'll notice as I'm pinching, I'm also kind of pulling up along the clay just like this to kind of bring the walls of that pinch pot up a little bit. You'll also notice that I'm not making a perfectly round bowl here. If I wanted to round this out a little bit, I'd round my fingers. I'm, instead, I'm keeping my fingers relatively flat so I get a little bit of a pointed shape, very much like this acorn shape down here at the bottom. So you're gonna do that all the way around and you're gonna to try to keep your clay even thickness all the way through um, so that you don't get any cracking as your clay is drying. If your clay is too thick or too thin in certain areas, that could cause a crack because your clay is drying unevenly. So you wanna make sure that you have a pretty even wall all the way around so that your clay dries evenly and doesn't crack. So once you get to this point, you'll see that my pinch pot isn't perfect, that's okay. Uh, we don't really want a perfect pinch pot, otherwise uh, it stops looking organic. And then we won't really have an acorn shape, right? We'll have a uh, mass produced shape and we don't really want that. We want a really nice kind of organic shape. So once we've gotten to this point, we're gonna go ahead and take our fingers and dip in just a little bit of water. Something really important to note, I've got my fingers slightly wet. We never wanna put this in the water, never put your project in the water. And the reason for that is if you stick the clay directly in the bowl of water, it will melt. And we don't want our projects melting on us. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna dip our fingers so that they're just a little bit wet. And we're gonna slide them up like this. So we're smoothing out the edges and we're making a tiny point at the bottom of our acorn. So we're sliding up here and we're making just a tiny little point at the bottom of our acorn. And the reason for this is acorns generally have a little pointed end on them just like this. So we wanna make that little point here. Just like this. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect because acorns are organic shapes and they are not perfect shapes. Uh, as we learned in Hector the Collector, every acorn in his collection was different. They were all the same though because they were acorns, so don't worry about it. Um, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine or like your siblings or your friends or anybody else's uh, because your acorn is gonna be perfectly yours. So once you've got this kind of smoothed out shape, you can either leave the edges like this or you can cut them down a little bit so it's a little bit easier for that edge uh, when we connect the two of them. So I'm gonna cut this top part off here with mine. All I'm gonna do is take my fork and I'm just gonna kind of cut through that edge there so it stays a little bit more even. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, just generally, the right shape should be just fine. So I'm gonna cut my edge on this side too to make room for my acorn top. So once you're done, your shape should look something like this. It's not perfect, um, but it's generally the shape of the bottom of the acorn and it's generally pretty smooth out as well. That's kind of what we're looking for here. Now you're gonna go ahead and round your edges in a little bit by pushing this finger down a little bit below the edge and pulling that top inwards. And that's just gonna make sure that this fits really nicely under the top portion of your acorn here when we attach the two of them. After you've got the bottom section of your acorn ready, you are gonna go ahead and set that aside and pick up that smaller piece of clay that we grabbed earlier. That small piece of clay, if you left it sitting out like I did, might be a little bit hard. Um, what you could have done to avoid that, what I didn't do, is you could have put a little piece of plastic over it and that would have kept the moisture just a little bit better. It's a good practice when working with clay. Or if you didn't, like I didn't, what you can do is you can grab a little bit of water on your fingers like I just did and we're gonna go ahead and kind of squish that uh, into the clay as we're doing this. If you add too much water, again, it will melt, so make sure you do not melt your clay. Now we're gonna go through basically the same process we went through before to make the bottom part of this acorn. So we're gonna start out by taking this and we're gonna kind of squish it into a ball shape in our hands, just like this. 
And again, once it's kind of in a general ball shape, you can try to roll it around either on your counter, on your table, or your workspace, or you can take it and you can put it in your hands and kind of move your hands in alternate circles. So this one's going this way and this one's going the same way, just not at quite the same speed. Alrighty, so once you get the general shape of a ball, you can smooth it out if you want to to get rid of some of those cracks. You're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. You're gonna press your thumb in, but instead of going all the way in this time, we're gonna kind of flatten this one out just a little bit because we want the top of our acorn to be just a little bit flatter than the bottom of our acorn. So we're gonna open it up and notice I'm leaving just a little bit of a kind of chunk of clay in the center here. And the reason I'm doing that is because we wanna leave some clay so that we can make sure that we can make a little stick coming out the top of our acorn here. So when you're finished, you should get something that looks a little bit like this. It looks a little bit like a little bowl or a rounded pancake uh, with a little bit of a knob on the top here. We wanna make sure that our, uh, the bottom part of our acorn fits inside the top of our acorn here. So I'm actually gonna make mine just a little bit wider. I might add a little bit of clay if, if mine's too uh, thin and it won't quite fit all the way around the sides of my acorn. But I think we should be okay here, yes. So you want it to just barely fit on the inside. And remember, if yours is not exactly the same shape as mine, don't worry because every acorn is different and they are all beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and have something that looks like this. Um, in order to attach these though, we're gonna do something called slipping and scoring. Okay, so now we're moving on to this part. We're starting with this part called scoring. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to rough up the edges here so that we can give the clay something to hold on to when we connect the two pieces together like this. So we're gonna do this to both sides. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fork and you're gonna go all the way around just like this and you're gonna make that edge of the clay really nice and rough. Be careful that you don't break your clay while you're doing this. I know I said rough, but you're gonna be gentle with your clay. You're just going to make the edges of your clay rough and again, you wanna be doing this on both sides. See, I'm leaving a little bit of room on the edge here because I'm only going to score where the two pieces of clay are connecting and that's a little bit inside the top part of your acorn here. So once I've scored my clay just a little bit, I'm gonna take just a little bit of water and I'm gonna create some slip um, on the outside of the clay by mixing just a little bit of water so that a little bit of that roughness sort of melts on the clay. Again, we don't wanna to add too much water. We never wanna dip this directly into the water um, because that will cause our whole project to melt. But we're just gonna add a little bit to the edges of the clay here where they connect. Now we've slipped and we scored both edges. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna gently press the two of these together to create sort of our finished acorn form here. I'm making sure that I go all the way around and I make sure that the two sides connect uh, everywhere that they're touching. And after you've done that, you get your general acorn shape. Now remember, your acorn does not have to look like my acorn. You can tell just by looking at my two acorns, they're very different shapes. One's much larger, one's kind of squat, um, and it looks a little flatter on the top, and that's totally fine. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up some of the little divots in our clay that we might have made. If you have a lot of excess um, shell or top of your acorn on any sides, you can go ahead and remove that by taking this and sort of cutting it off with your fork here. So you're welcome to do that. I'm pretty happy with the shape of mine, so I'm gonna leave mine like this. But I'm gonna take my fingers and just sort of smooth out some of those dry cracks that I see in the clay um, that happen when the clay dries out or when it's been worked with a lot. Alrighty, so once we've kind of taken our finger, smoothed out some of those cracks, um, we can go back in and we can start adding texture. And again, the way we're going to do this is with our texture tools. So first, first, before I even get to that, I'm gonna create the knob at the top of my acorn with that excess clay that I left, just by pinching a little bit and kind of pulling up in a circle. And you can see I've kind of made this shape and I kind of like to make mine lean over just a little bit so it looks like it was connected to a tree and fell from that tree there. After I've done that, I'm actually gonna use my straw and I like to press in these little circle shapes. You can kind of see them here into the top of my acorn. 
Um, it's not important that you get these exact little circle shapes. It's more important that you create texture, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. So on this one, I used my straw. You can see all the way around. Um, I'm going to show you some of the textures you can get, even just with your fork here. So what I do is take my fork, and I'm just going to press in the sides here. And as I'm doing that, you can see I'm getting this really nice sort of rough texture on the top of my acorn here. So you can use your fork, you can use a straw, um, basically anything that will create texture when you push it into your acorn, that's kind of what you're looking for here. So you're going to continue doing your texture all the way around um, the top of your acorn so that it's super textured. I'm gonna move on to the bottom though so you can see our next step. Um, you don't have to watch me do the entire thing. So if you need more time, go ahead and pause the video again. Um, so that you can catch up to the next step when you're ready. Alrighty, so on this bottom step, I do want there to be a little bit of texture because if we leave it perfectly smooth, um, it's just not quite as realistic. If you want a perfectly smooth acorn, you go for it, honey. Um, but if you want to add a little bit of texture, what you can do is you can take your fork or a toothpick or a skewer if you have one um, and go ahead and just very lightly brush it over the bottom part of this acorn here to create those lines. You're going to start from the top and the bottom. So we're not going horizontal, we're going vertical from top to the bottom. Once we've got it like this, we don't want it to be quite so defined, so I'm going to take just a tiny bit of water and this time I'm going horizontal and I'm rubbing out just a little bit some of those uh, sort of texture lines. You can go circular, you can go vertically if you don't have very deep lines, or you can go horizontally to kind of get rid of some of those deep rivets. Um, and once you finish that, once you continue going all the way around, you will have your finished acorn. I am so excited that I got to spend this time with you today, you guys. I enjoyed so much making and just getting dirty a little bit and having our hands in clay together. I hope that you had fun making and that you're happy with your end result. If you're not, the best part about clay is you can go ahead and squish it up just like this and start on over, alrighty? So I've got my finished one here. I'm pretty happy with that. I can start over with this one if I want to. Um, I hope that you enjoyed our virtual family day today, you guys. I would love to see your finished acorn creation, so if you post these on Facebook or Instagram, go ahead and tag us at Amoka Museum, that's A-M-O-C-A -A Museum, and we will get to see your finished product. I am so excited for that. If you guys are looking for more programs to do, we do have other virtual family days up on our website, so you can check that out at www.amoka. Org. That's www.amoca.org. While you're there, go ahead and check out some of the other fun programs that we have available for you guys. I hope to see you next time, and I hope that you enjoyed this virtual family day. Bye-bye!